So there's this fashion trend called tech wear. In this style, people wear all black clothing with lots of pockets and lots of straps, and they generally look like an urban ninja. I think it looks pretty cool. Pretty meme but pretty cool too. In this video, I want to focus on tech wear bags, because these are awesome both from a functionality standpoint and also from a style standpoint. So, I want to make one. To make this bag, I'm going to be using my 1924 Zinger sewing machine and also some really interesting materials. So, please enjoy and let's get right down to it. The body of the bag is going to be made out of this. This is some black leather and I know it's pretty unorthodox for this style, but I think it's gonna look cool. I also have here some metal zippers, some nylon thread and nylon straps, and a whole bunch of metal hardware. At this point, I pretty much have no idea what I'm gonna do out of these materials, but this is kind of a mood board to set the feel of the bag. After staring at my raw materials for a while, I eventually came up with a design that hopefully will look good. My inspiration for the bag came from a military front pack, so kind of like a tactical vest. And I want to use this, but add a few tricks to make it a bit more interesting. So what you can see me cutting out here is the main body of the bag. At this point I'm not entirely certain on the whole design, but I want to have a strong base on which I can build my foundation. So this is that strong base. This rounded over rectangle is going to be the front of the bag. I need an exact copy to make the back. Now let's move on to the pockets. I want to have three of them equally spaced on the front of the bag. But I don't just want to have plain looking pockets, so that's why I added this decorative fold in the middle of each of them. And this also serves a second purpose, it will increase each pocket's size by a bit. So, I need to cut this funky shape out from the leather three times. It will increase the size of each pocket, because the leather can fold and stretch a bit more with this crease in the middle. So, if you overfill each pocket, then it can expand, and I think that will make it for a more interesting look, but it will also add a bit more functionality. At least, that's what I'm hoping. What I'm having a bit of trouble here is keeping the fold stuck. I need to do this on all three of them. I'm going to have to keep that fold in the leather. And for that I'm going to be using my iron. This is definitely not a permanent fold. So even though after ironing it will stick, it doesn't mean that it will stick in the long term. So you obviously have to sew each side to keep that fold stuck. After finishing up on the ironing board, this is the result. I think it looks pretty sick, and it definitely added some decoration to the whole look of the piece. Since I'm making this up as I go along, I lay out my pieces and think about how to move forward. So what I decided on is adding a strap of leather around each pocket, and then adding a zipper into that strap. I thought about adding velcro or adding a different solution, for example a belt, but I think a zipper is kind of more in line with the aesthetic of techwear. So that's what I'm doing here. Since this is real leather, the underside isn't treated, so it's white. It really looks off from the black body of the bag. That is why every single edge has to be folded over on itself so as to hide the inside. And that is why I'm making my zipper this way. I need to fold every single cut edge, and I'm going to be using some glue to do this. This is only a temporary fix, so after gluing it in place, I can just go on the sewing machine and it won't move apart, and I can sew it down pretty easily. I basically glue up all the cut edges over on themselves, so as to hide the white inside, and then glue on the whole zipper, and finally sew it in place. Now when I flip it over, every single edge is folded over on itself, and that means no white is visible in the center of the strap. Now I can check if my zipper actually fits in the groove. And yeah, it does. It's gonna look awesome. Now I need to do this two more times, until I end up with these. 
I can then glue on the zipper and move on to sewing. This is just some generic contact adhesive. It's a pretty nasty substance, it smells of acetone and it's kind of got this really sticky and goopy like texture. I think it's pretty nasty, but it works like a charm for any sort of leather work because once the glue dries and you stick anything to it, it's stuck forever. So it's a pretty strong bond and with leather pieces you need a lot of force to sew through every layer. So that's why leather workers usually use contact adhesives. I apply pressure along the entire length of the strap to make sure that the zipper is bonded correctly. Then I move on to the next two. After getting those two done, now I can finally move on to sewing. I need to sew along each zipper to make sure that they will be fixed in place permanently. And for that, I'm going to be using my Zinger sewing machine. This is a 1924 Zinger number 15. It's operated by foot, so no electricity required. I actually restored this entire machine myself, so stripped it down to all parts and then reassembled it, and it runs like a charm. This machine's main purpose was never for leather sewing, so it was mostly designed for textile work, but it makes short work of this kind of thin cowhide. I've actually tested the strength of this sewing machine and it can actually go through four or five layers of pretty thick hard leather. So that's more than 1.5 centimeters, which is quite extraordinary. But you can see me struggling sometimes even with this one layer. That's because of the glue on the bottom. Yeah, I didn't think about that. And the glue is kind of binding up the feed dogs. So I should have covered the other parts with some painter's tape or something to make it easier to push through the sewing machine. The suede side of the leather is also making it stick. So I should come up with a different solution for feeding it through my machine. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. After fixing the zipper to the leather strap, I can then fix this whole sub-assembly to the main pocket. And I have to repeat this three times, and I didn't calculate exactly how much leather I needed for the straps, so I'm going to have some overhang. But I have a pretty neat trick that can solve it, and in this way I can get a perfect fit without any calculation. So here you can see these small overhanging leather flaps and to make sure that they meet at the correct place I kind of push them into the pocket and then find where they would meet and then sew it down into a French seam. This way I don't have to calculate anything and the fit will be perfect. Obviously there is still a small hole left so I need to stitch that down as well. But after that one pocket is done. Now I just need to repeat it three more times. But before I do that, I want to make sure that my design idea worked so that this fold will actually expand when the pocket is overfilled. And as you can see, when I push on it from the back with my fingers, it actually expands. And I can just squish it down into the perfect fold it once was. So I'm glad that my idea worked because I really wasn't sure how it would look, but I think it turned out pretty good. At the least, I managed to succeed on two pockets, but on the last one, I didn't pay enough attention and sewed it on the wrong way around. Yeah, I make mistakes like this all the time, it's really annoying. So all you need to do is break out the straight razor and rip it apart, sew it back again, and then you're done. If you're wondering about the stitch holes and all those fuzzy pieces of thread that are left in the holes, they won't be visible if I just adjust my seam allowance a tiny bit so that they will be on the inside of the pocket instead of the outside. Now I can finally check how the bag will look from the front. And I'm liking what I'm seeing. So it's time to attach all pockets to the front of the bag. And as Jeremy Clarkson says sometimes on Top Gear, sometimes my genius is almost frightening. 
I've managed to make the zipper so long that I can actually sew on the inside edge. That means that the white stuff, you know, the suede side, won't be visible from the outside and I don't have to make an additional fold to hide that seam. So I've just basically made an undersized template, drew it on to the front of the bag and then I'm going around and stitching all along the inside of the pocket. After finishing this stitch I can just zip up the zipper and then the stitch will be basically hidden. Okay, now that's one pocket done. And I think I did an okay job in sewing it in place. The zipper works fine and it's looking quite nice. Not really getting that techwear look just yet, but the bag is far from finished. But first, let's add the second pocket. And the third. Now all together, they look much better. Now that this is done, the whole front panel of the bag is completely finished. Now I need to move on to the back side. The back side really won't have that many features, so I just want to have a long strap with a zipper inside so that I have a main pocket. And I'm going to be using the same technique that I showed you before. So cutting a straight line and then gluing on the zipper and sewing along the edge. What's a bit different with this zipper is that I didn't have a long enough strap of leather so I had to stitch two together. And at first I did this with a French seam but that was a dumb decision since I cannot fold four layers of leather nicely together. Or at least they would deform a bit and that wouldn't look that good. So I kind of massacred this French seam and I'm going to glue the zipper down first and stitch it together and then I'm going to go in and repair the French seam so that it looks nice from the outside. Obviously it won't be as strong as before but that really doesn't matter since my thread is so so strong. I am actually using this really high tensile strength nylon thread that is quite difficult to cut with even scissors. So I think that this bag will last probably a lifetime. At least that's what I'm hoping. Because I know for a fact that this leather weathers really really nicely. And I think that it is really cool when a leather bag or a leather piece of clothing kind of evolves over the years as you use it. And I think it actually turns more beautiful than it was before. In my opinion, if you stay faithful to a piece of clothing, then you deserve that rugged, kind of weathered and awesome look that you get from wearing it for all those years. So kind of cheating that is not okay in my book. Up till now the sewing has been quite easy but I don't know why this strap stuck really hardcore to the top of the sewing machine and it was quite difficult to move it along. So that's why you could see me using my hands so much uh, to hand crank the machine. After getting it sewn I just cut off the loose pieces of thread and then burned them with a lighter. This melts the ends of the threads and that is just basically an added piece of security so that the thread doesn't come apart. Before I can sew this to the front of the bag I need to attach all my metal hardware so as to hide the seams and to make it look neat and tidy. I was playing around a bit with the arrangement of the metal pieces and this is what I came up with. So to have six of them on the sides and to also have a carabiner to hold some chain to make it look a bit more hardcore. I'm not really sold on the chain idea yet but I can always just leave it out and not use it. So whatever, I'm gonna add it and if it doesn't look cool then I'm just not gonna wear it like that. Before I can move on to assembly I first need to complete each panel individually. So first I'm going to start off with the front panel and since this only has the carabiner it's going to be a pretty quick job. I've selected this 2cm thick strap from nylon 
and this is going to be attached somewhere to the side of the bag. If I so choose and if I want to look kind of freaky, for example if I'm going to a rave, then I might just add the chain to this carabiner and attach it to the ends of the zippers. Here's a second trick. This strap is really kind of thin, so as to increase the surface area, I spread the two sides of the strap apart and this means that more stitches will be located on the strap and this will make for a way stronger connection. First, I'm going to sew it down on the wrong side. Not because I made a mistake, but to add even more strength because if you fold it down one side then sew it and then you fold it down the other side then sew it again then that will make for a really really strong connection point. Here you can see me kind of flipping it over and then sewing down on the other side as well. This is qu getting quite thick so my machine is struggling a bit but after a while I punched right through and managed to make a really strong attachment point. Now that that's finished, the front panel is finally done, so that means I can finally attach my zipper. Obviously, the back side is not done yet, so I'm going to have to wait with the final assembly till I add all the holders for all the straps. If you are still watching, you probably have a good idea of what this channel's content is about and what type of videos I do, and hopefully you actually enjoy them since you kept watching this long. So, if you would like to support the channel further, then please consider subscribing as it really helps the channel grow and reach a wider audience. Thanks. With that said, the bag is coming along nicely. I've actually sewn on one side of this zipper strap and you could see me using the hand crank a lot. That is because my seam allowance is pretty precise on the edges of the bag and this means that I have to be really, really precise in my stitches and that's why you could see me using the hand crank because it allows for a bit more control and a bit more precision when it comes to these tiny stitches on the sides. As you can see, I'm using that same trick I showed you before, so leaving two overhanging flaps and then sewing them down into a French seam. This way I actually position this seam in the exact middle of the bag, so that it will look nice and symmetrical. Now let's move on to the back panel. As you can see I'm eyeballing the length of these straps to make it look kind of nice and not to have too much overhang from the profile of the bag, but also to have enough surface area to sew it onto the back panel. So I basically eyeball one of them and then copy the length five times. I'm going to attach these to the back side using the same technique that I've shown you before. And there you go, they're done. Now it's time for the final assembly. I have only one stitch that is going to go around the entire perimeter of the bag. To do this I need to turn the bag inside out and then sew the two face sides together making sure the middle of the front of the bag lines up with the middle of the back side of the bag. This is always the most exciting part, because when you are sewing bags like this, you need to do it inside out, and that means you can't really tell whether the final product will be good or it won't. After turning it out, now it's time to add some clasps. I added three of these clasps on one side, then I'm gonna do three straps on the other side with clasps providing the connection to the body. After clicking these clasps together, now it's time to check out the bag and finally see if I've managed to nail the techwear look. So let's actually put this thing on and see if it fits right. To put it on, you basically only need to connect one of the straps and that fixes it really securely in place. I actually think that I managed to nail this techwear look because it's got lots of useful pockets, it's got lots of awesome straps so it's really securely attached to my body and I think that is one of the prerequisites of techwear stuff and it is also all black and metal so it looks pretty sick. 
but it is definitely not an everyday wear, so you need to dress it appropriately. I can even take it a bit further by wearing this long trench coat and adding some chain to it. Yeah, it's pretty over the top, but if you're going to a rave or generally out in a dark place, I think that it could look pretty metal. So let me know in the comments below what you think. See you guys next time.